fantasy and some flights. Exploring the realms of beer, board games, books, and bourbon. Welcome to another episode of the Fireside and Some Flights podcast. I I guess we can just call it that now. <laughs> We've done a couple way, right? of them in a row. So we're going to well, we're going to get some like name confusion, you know. <laughs> we're going to we're going to have a Fantasy and Some Flights episode on the from Fireside and Some Flights. Yeah, featuring yeah. Fireside and Some Flights hosts. <laughs> but yeah, so we're we're still in our Fireside kick just cuz our lives are crazy. Yeah. And we, you know, didn't record for a long time and we got a lot to talk about. So I'm yeah. excited to talk about some more stuff with you before sure. we do that. Uh Oh, by the way, I'm Dalton. Oh yeah. I knew that. <laughs> I guess they didn't. I just like to talk. I, yeah. I'm excited to get into it. I like I don't like to talk unless it's on a podcast or with like you. Like if it's right. with anybody else in the world, I just like do not want to speak. Shh. They don't then they're gonna know that we're actually introverts. <laughs> Keep talking. Yeah, right. Like if you had told me that I was gonna be a host of a podcast when I was in high school, I probably would have crawled under my covers and cried. So <laughs> Fine. I won't go to college then. <laughs> But you can also tell that we're introverts because we have to, you know, drink to do this. So, (laughs) (laughs) but, (laughs) but anyways, uh, speaking of drinking, we are drinking. Uh, So, Dalton, what's on your flight tonight? So I am, uh, I'm rehaving the Muhu chocolate milk stout, which I had a couple episodes ago. Great Um, name. Actually, it's probably been more than a couple episodes. This is a Terrapin beer, Athens, Georgia. I like, I finally nailed down that it tastes like a Tootsie Roll. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, that's the taste. Yep. There you go. It tastes like a Tootsie Roll. It doesn't have like the waxy kind of like nasty bits of a Tootsie Roll, but like, that's what it reminds me of, um, chocolate milk stout. So I'm enjoying it. Um, gotta get my milk stouts in before the summer hits in full so <laughs> yeah it, it's like may but it's still yeah. <laughs> 55 degrees outside because indiana sucks <laughs> right right so i'm justified <laughs> awesome uh what about you so last episode we talked about how i had 1792 at one of my friend's houses yeah. and so I, I i i stayed true to my word i went to the local liquor store and i bought me a bottle and that's what i am drinking tonight so yeah. it's a it's good i it's it's not as good as I remember it being, and I'm not sure if that was I, I had a different batch or or a, a, a different type at, at his place. Mm. Um, but Dalton, because you you have just like the regular like small batch, the small batch, yeah. um, which you were correct, it's, it's around thirty dollars. Cool. Uh, so, but Dalton did uh, suggest that I water it down a little bit, and that did make it a lot better. Good. Um, the the like we were kind of talking, the flavor profile of this is really good. It's kind of the back end, the burn that really is kind of like harsh yeah um so the the water helps that a good, little bit good. but but yeah that's what's on our flight yeah i i think i think this one will be a keeper i, I think it'll mm-hmm. probably it's not gonna you know dethrone elijah craig yeah. or anything for, for <laughs> the my 30 champion. yeah the reigning champion yeah or your uh or your templeton yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this corner standing at 750 <laughs> milliliters <laughs> In this corner, born in 1792. <laughs> but it's also, it has the added benefit, we didn't talk about this last time, of looking fancy as fuck. Yeah, dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, this bottle has this, like, simplistic look. It has, mm-hmm. like, a red, like, uh, like label around it, this mm-hmm. gold top. It looks yeah. so fancy. It does look so <laughs> fancy. And it was sitting right next to the Angel's Envy at the Lakers store. Oh, cool. So... It's a high bar. That's high bar. <laughs> exactly. Basically, nope. they must have been on the high shelf. Then. Yeah. Angel's Envy was what you had on our first episode. It right? is. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. a favorite. Good. So, well, uh, yeah. So, we just played a game. We did just play a game. We just played Red Rising. Yeah. By Stonemaier Games, which, if you listen to our Red Rising episode, we had Jamie and Alex on, uh, who are the designers of the game. Yeah. So. I'm curious. I've I've played it three times now, and I uh-huh. think this was your first. I don't think I, this was your first time it playing. Was my first time, you had to teach it to me. Yes. So. <laughs> what What were your thoughts? Yeah. Um. So let's start out with this. Can be one to six player, right? Like it has an autonomous. It does. Version. Yes. At, at least I saw it on the box, and I assume from Stonemeyer that it's going to have the the autonomous. Yeah. And like just kind of like a side note, I've heard the autonomous is pretty good. So okay, cool. Uh, I have not played it, but I've talked to people who have, and they they say it's pretty good. Worth a try, yeah. Um, I think that so first off, as a as a lover of the book, well, let's talk about it from the book perspective first. It does a it has great. It obviously is going to have great theming, right? It's like it's it's picking up one of our favorite IPs and one of Jamie's favorite IPs of all yep. time. 
it is executed by someone who loves the series. And so it's going to have all your favorite characters. It's going to have art of them and like abilities that like, oh, cool. Like this character wants to have cards that are like, sim- like you know, linking up with these other characters. And like, that makes sense. It does not though, if you haven't read the full series, if you've only read Red Rising, or if you have not read any of it at all, it doesn't spoil anything of the book. Um, so it, the only thing you could draw is like maybe some conclusion about like relationships between the characters if you extrapolated based on their names and stuff. But but even then, I think it's kind then, of hard yeah. to, to figure out. Yeah. But. Again, with Stone Miner, we always expect that the components are extremely well done. And that doesn't there's no deviation from that. Here. <laughs> no, um, those were like extremely well done. I think from like a gameplay perspective, it was forcing some interesting decisions in that like your cards. We, we love dual purpose cards. We talk about that a lot. Um, and so there's this fun decision on your turn of like, do I, which card do I play from my hand that I don't want to score because any cards that are in your hand at the end of the game, you score. Do so you want to hold on to those cards, but those cards also have nice abilities. And if you play them, you get to play the ability. Um, and then when you play a card, you can also pick up a card from the board um, that somebody played earlier. Um, so there's this interesting decision of like, can I afford to play this card? Can I make it available for my opponent to pick up? Can I put it in a location that will, you know, um, cover up another card that I don't want them to have? And so there's a lot like kind of going on with that decision. The downsides of it, I would think, are it felt very dependent on, like, knowing what cards were maybe in the game, you know? Like, in terms of what... I agree, yeah. Yeah, what abilities are there? Is this a good card or a bad card? Like, which I think a lot of, like, card-based games are going to struggle with that. But it's a deck of, like, 100-something cards, and each of them are individual. Yep. You know, completely unique. So, from a component st- standpoint, that's really great. From a gameplay standpoint, it slows you down, maybe, on your first playthrough. Yeah, I've played the game three times, each time with two players... The, the game isn't, I think, doesn't shine at two players. Yeah. I think it's, it's definitely going to shine at like a four player. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of things there. I think a lot of the game seems like there's going to be a lot of downtime because there is so much wording on all of these cards because yeah. each card is unique and you have to read all of them. And sometimes, you know, you have to read the card that's three down because a card in your hand manipulates all of those cards. And so yeah. uh, with four players, I could see there being a lot of downtime, but there are what I think that would probably get outweighed by the fact that a lot of the cards reference specific individual cards in the hundred plus card deck Yeah, that you're in, in a two player game, you're going to see 20% of that deck. Yeah. And so it's, it makes it very hard to run a strategy where you need to find Darrow. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I've seen Darrow one time. And yeah. so it, it's, I got lucky. Actually, that happened to me where I really needed Cassius and I got him. And just like <laughs> yeah. I just top decked Cassius, you yeah. know, on like a draw. Like, cool. Like, okay, okay, cool. I did yeah. it. But if I hadn't, then I would have really been in trouble. Yeah. And there's no way to like search the deck for him. Right. So I think that in two player, it can kind of struggle there. It's kind of interesting. In, in all of the games that we've played, it's only been a spread of 30 points between the, between the two players. Yeah. And you're scoring 250 points. 250 right. points. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're, you're, yeah, the spread's like 10% of your score. Exactly. Or which, which is really tight. impressive. Um, and I, I have tried three different strategies now, mm-hmm. uh, because I think it's a very much, you have to pick your strategy based on your starting hand type game. Yeah. Um, and, and then kind of like change as cards come out. Yeah. And I did get the feeling that it was very well play tested. Yes. I, yeah. I felt like it was a very balanced game that the cards were well designed and they had interactions that I expected. And yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited to play more. I think that the game will shine at higher player counts or in a two-player game after you have played 15 times. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that's a big ask. Yeah. Uh, I think it's not a big ask if you have the game. Yeah. Because when you have the game with the two-player game, once everyone kind of knows what they're doing, they understand the cards, they understand the mechanics, you can probably knock out a game in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's not a long game, so it's really easy to hit that higher player count. Yeah. But... Like the collector's edition, you're sitting at like a fifty dollar retail. Yeah. And I, I if you like the IP, I think it's worth it. If you're not into the IP or into that, I I think that there are probably better fifty dollar games out there. Yeah. I, I would also say I would at this point maybe not play it at two again. Like there there's just yeah. so many games that are built for two player okay. or like really yeah. shiny oh, yeah. two player, yeah. you know, that it's yeah. like it's really gonna be hard to fill it into that slot. Um but I, I did think that it would maybe kind of freshen um, games like uh, like Seven Wonders, like games that feel like that yeah. slot, you know, that it, it yep. could be a nice kind of compliment to that part of your library. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's definitely, it fills a, that spot where it's not a, it's not a drinking game. Right. But it's not yeah, a game that, yeah. it's not like a Quacks or something like that, yeah. but it's, Maybe it's like a starting out or ending the night type of game yeah. where you're not fully invested into 
you know, the deep strategy of it, but they're still like really meaningful decisions. Mm -hmm. And even at two players, I think especially at two players, like there, there are some very interesting decisions on where you place your cards on, you know, what locations, because there are specific location bonuses. So I think that it's a game that either shines at higher player counts or shines after a significant number of plays and you understand how all the cards interact with each other. You're right that it would be a bit reactive. It's not a like super high strategy game. Um, like I think of the feeling that you get in like four player splendor where you're like, okay, I can't really play my turn anymore. You know, I just have to wait till like the guy before me is going and now I can start playing my turn. I wonder if that would maybe happen for you at like the higher player counts. But the, I guess the trade off of that um, is again, that you would get to see more of the, like the, the playing field for the two of us, because there are four locations that you can play cards to the play field felt very stagnant, you know? Yes. And yeah. there was a couple of times in the game where like both of us just started top decking cards because we're like, neither of us want any of the four cards that are available to pick. So we're just going to pull cards from the top because these are all garbage, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And, and I think that a higher player count, more strategies in play that would start to kind of freshen that up a little bit, which I think would help. So, so. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. For, for something that we haven't done in a while, but give me a mech rating. Ooh, a mech rating in a fireside episode. <laughs> oh. done. We're going there. But like, we haven't done a mech rating in forever. I know. It's like a, outside of like Instagram, but on the podcast, yeah. we really haven't. So yeah, I'm going to, I have the, uh, I have the spreadsheet pulled up, so I'm going to type it in as you go. So I can get a, so you can, can get me the, I can get you the overall, the overall towards the end. So mechanics. So board game mechanics. What, yeah. what do you think? I'm going to land at, I'm going to land at a 7.5. So the, what's driving that there is a lot I think the there's a lot of novelty in the way that the cards are used and the amount of decisions that you are making when the action on your turn is literally just put a card on the field like that's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's a ton that's being like driven that's driving that decision based on these intricate and novel and interesting mechanics that are going on. Yep. Um we talked about I think even while we were sitting there that there's a couple of things um, like the way that the the kind of rolling the die works, which gives you like this kind of random bonus. Some of the bonuses on there we didn't really agree with. Some of the like the actions that you um, have available to you uh, when you like place a card either felt like too powerful or not powerful enough. So there was like some balancing and just like little kind of elements, I guess, of the game that aren't, that weren't like not working, but felt like they could be improved. So that that's where that kind of falls for me. Yeah, I agree. I had it at a six point five. Okay, and I think kind of which is still like above average. Like I. I I do not think that this is a bad game at all. Like I, I, I enjoy playing this game. I I feel like I've kind of been talking about it in a negative light, but I kind of wanted to talk about it more critically. Yeah. Because we we've been promoting it a lot. And For so sure. like I don't want you to think that it's all sunflower and roses, right? Right. Uh, but six point five is above average, but I think that the that is mainly because I've only played it two players and so many of the cards play off of specific other cards in the deck, which That's true. Uh it, it's kind of a hard balance to make i think I, I do reserve the right to increase that after <laughs> i have played with higher player counts yeah so that that's 6.5 for me 7.5 for you what about experience yeah experience i think i'm sitting at maybe a 5.5 right now um in that i feel 5.5 is that range of like yeah i'm happy to play that you know i think i would feel i'm, I'm with you i want to try it at a higher player count and so like if i had the opportunity to play try it at a higher player count i would like drive towards that and then past that i think i would be I would like always be happy to play it. I don't know if I would be the person like trying to drive us, drive it off the shelf. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. I had a seven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and mainly, so I, I think that is just really driven towards, I really liked seeing the cards, understanding who they were talking about and like understanding the interactions between the two mm-hmm. like cards that are, you know, you know, this card is going to be really happy and score a lot of more victory points if it's with a pink. And it's just like that, oh, yeah. that was a lot of fun. I also really enjoyed kind of like the back and forth in a two player where they, it's like, okay, I know that Dalton needs to go to the Institute. I'm never going to play a card to the Institute. And if he plays a card on the Institute, I'm probably going to take that. So it kind of blocks him out of that. So I think that that's kind of an interesting interaction that yeah. I enjoyed. Yeah. So that, that landed me at the seven. So yeah. now probably the higher of the three scores, what's your component rating? Yeah. See, so I'm worrying. What, what I'm worrying on is I am not a huge fan of the type of art style that is used, but that's that's very that's a very subjective. Yeah, choice. and you're wrong. So. And, and you love it, right? <laughs> it's it's a little cartoony, and I, I think I would yeah. have wanted something that was a little like grittier, or more realistic, because yeah. it's like a very gritty and realistic series. So it's maybe just like it wasn't meeting my expectation of art style. I would place it at a eight point five. I think the main things, like we said, the main things driving that are the success of you know meeting the IP 
in the interest yeah, that we all absolutely like, yeah. have in that. You know, you get to see all your favorite characters. You get to see how they were implemented. They were done extremely well with like meeting a specific scar or a specific hairstyle or, you know, all of those yeah. things were implemented very, very well. One thing that we both did note that I think is important that is a failing of the components is it is real. Th- the game is very tied to the color of the cards. That's the whole theme of the book, right? Um, right. Yep. And so it's not very colorblind friendly. I think you you had said that there's like a little symbol, which I actually had trouble like kind of picking out. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's hard to see because you want to face it so that your cards, you're showing the right or the left-hand side of the cards, which shows mm. the victory points and kind of what they need. Yeah. And so when you get a bigger hand, like they have these awesome like card tray stands that, that is you nice, put yeah. it in. And you're covering up that symbol yeah. whenever you put it in those. So it's like you don't see it printed gold. You don't see it printed silver. Yeah. And so, yes, it's there. But it's like kind of hard to see if you're utilizing the card trades that are given. Especially because provided. like one of the cards might say like, okay, this card gets a certain number of victory points with every like with every pink that it's that's right. like also yep. in your hand or something like that. And and wouldn't you have to like know what the symbol for pink was or something like that in order to like <laughs> yeah. make that work? You yep. know, because it, it and, and so, yeah, it just that feels like a spot where like components could have been maybe improved, but it does. Again, it has the big slightly, it's not quite a tarot card, but they're slightly larger than average or standard they're so pretty card size. And they're really pretty it has a nice foil on like the golds. Um, it has all of the like symbols and uh, character and theming of the characters that you would expect from the series. So um, that, that part of it was a real success. Yeah. I, I, I'm on like you, I, I really enjoyed the artwork. I, I'm just a fan of, of the cartoon. It's not cartoonish, but the anim animated style of mm-hmm. art mm-hmm. or the exaggerated style of art or, or however you want to whatever it's very adjective. colorful you know it's yeah. very vibrant Absolutely. and yeah um and so I, I i really enjoyed that i do agree with you on the components rating i initially rated it at a 9.5 on instagram when i posted it uh-huh. and that was after my first play after a couple more plays i i think that i'm i'm dropping that to just a just a nine. Just yeah, a nine. Only right? a nine. <laughs> only a nine. Uh, <laughs> but but mainly because I have had gameplay difficulty in the sense of like my decisions have been altered because I didn't understand it was a silver versus a gray. Yeah. Which like you have fourteen colors, it's hard to do that. Yeah. But it's still a gorgeous game. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So yeah. I thought it was really nice to give us those card trays like you were talking about. It's definitely a components thing. Um, it has a nice box organizer. Um, the box and all of the components are well constructed. You feel like they're going to hold up over time. Yeah, all, all of that plays in. Yeah, so I actually, for like uh, Marvel Champions, I, I printed, like I 3D printed card holders. Uh-huh. Very similar to that. Just to like kind of hold them. And yeah. then like that came in the mail. I was like, damn it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So overall... That brings um, you you had a 7.5, 5.5, 8.5 for an overall of a 6.7. I was really feeling the 0.5s apparently. Yeah, <laughs> right there in the middle, right? And then I had a, a 6.579 for an overall of a 7.0. Yeah. So overall, a great game. I, I really like the analogy that you were saying, how it's going to scratch that same itch yeah. as Seven Wonders. Yeah, for sure. Where you know you can, you can bring a big group to play right yeah. like it's up to six i mm-hmm. it could be a good like start of the night because it's only gonna be like 30 or 45 minutes everyone gets to learn a new game but not be like committed to the table for hours you right know? yep so so yeah that, that was red rising mm-hmm. we just played it i absolutely do not regret my purchase yeah. at all mm-hmm. i i like yeah. i i i really like it i think if you like the ip i think it's worth the buy if yeah. you don't like the ip then it's probably a question you'd have to kind of Look mm-hmm. into it a little bit more and decide at that yeah. point. Is it so, the type of mechanics that you yeah. want? And, so, yeah. so that that's kind of literally what we just played about an hour ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is literally what is actively on our mind. I also I want to talk about you have not watched Demon Slayer, right? Mm-mm. So we haven't talked a ton of anime recently, and anime is not a core, you know, but it's like it can get into a little bit of fantasy. And right. Obviously, yeah. we, we do like our anime. Fantasy is very broad term when it comes to <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> to, when it comes to fire set and some flights for sure <laughs> for sure it has like a magic system so you yeah know, it counts as fantasy there you go um so demon slayer it came out in 2019 um it's it's a single single season so far um shonen style anime so it's going to feel like your my hero academia's your okay full metal alchemist like that type of style of like a, you know someone who a young hero kind of like building their skill and in you know kind of the hero's journey the hero journey exactly in a in a a nutshell 
the theming is that it's sort of it's set in like a feudal um, Japan sort of think like samurai style almost and so the there are demons and demons are like way more powerful than uh, humans they're not to the point of like wiping out society but they're to the point of being able to kind of like toy with humans a little like they're definitely the ones that are in control and so there's a core of demon slayers and that's the hero ends up joining them and their goal is trying to learn how to f- like fight and kill demons and they do that uh using again primarily like like swords and like sam- almost like i said samurai style fighting um and and like a an a, a accompanying magic system uh, but the reason that it's on my mind is because um recently there was a movie came out so the season came out in like 2019 um, and then we haven't heard a lot from them for the last like two years. And then they released a movie and um, called Mugen Train or M-U-G-E-N. I think it's Mugen Train. And it is like killing the box office right now. It's doing extremely well. And one of the reasons it's doing so well is because, well, there, there's like, there's a couple, but one of the ones that's on my mind is that the, it is common, especially in Shonen style anime for if a movie comes out that accompanies the anime that it will be sort of a side story or almost maybe even not maybe even not canon that it's like a story that's told but like isn't considered part of the main storyline okay and this one is not that way it is an integral part of the storyline like you oh cool you almost you almost have to having watched the movie now i don't know how you could watch season two without having like watched this movie like it advances significant plot points that's cool yeah and so that part is extremely exciting um it's also like just as an anime it's um holding up against things like like the first couple of seasons of Attack on Titan, where that's it, a bold statement felt, right there, sir. Oh yeah, well it, <laughs> it, it definitely holds up against it. Okay, um, I, I can make that statement on solid. You sold ground, it, but right there, um, yeah, just with that yeah, comparison. You, okay, yeah. Um, the reason I was bringing it up though is because like Attack on Titan, those first couple of seasons is like it's a gorgeous style. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and this one is, it's very pretty in a different way, um, but it's, it is similarly. It's, visually appealing I is guess this I the say. one I, I remember you showed me a like a clip yes. from an anime uh, yeah yes. the, the, <laughs> go okay. on you are cool. yes okay. but yes you are thinking of the right i'm one. sure the listeners know as well so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, yeah tell them what you saw <laughs> um i don't know how to describe it except for like the iconic japanese painting painting of yeah. like the wave exactly yeah so it, it feels very much like that where like this is a great thing to do over a spoken medium of a podcast <laughs> is describe art styles, right? Yeah. Especially for people that don't understand for art engineers, styles. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it looks it like flows. it is like, it flows. That's a really good description yeah. for it. It looks like it is like drawn on an ancient scroll that you yes. saw from yeah, okay. feudal yep. Japan or something. Okay. And it's not all the time. It's just like, that's the way the magic system is drawn. Oh, cool. Okay. So like yeah. when they are using magic, it will be drawn that way. And okay. it really draws your eye yeah, to yeah. it. And it really okay. pops off of this like, Art style that is like more realistic uh, within still being anime. It's, yeah, it's not yeah, like, yeah. It's not hyper realism or something, but um, I'll have to check that out for sure. The yeah. movie itself was, it just took that to another level because all of a sudden now they have all these resources and time. And I mean, it was stunning. It was okay. really pretty. So you say you have to watch the movie to watch the second season. Do you have to watch the first season to watch the movie or can yeah. you jump? Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Basically, like the first season ends and they're getting on a train and the like movie <laughs> is Mugen train like the train that they got on and it tells the okay. story of the train yeah <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? and then the, presumably the second season is going to start when they get off the train yeah is this something we can find on Crunchyroll type yeah it's on i know it's on uh vrv crunch just crunch, crunch, crunch roll a different okay, medium cool. from them and it's on hulu as well yeah. i think that's where i think i watched it on hulu if i remember right i need i need to start finding these animes before they're 700 episodes long right <laughs> so i can, I I can wonder, hop on that bandwagon i do wonder how long this one is going to be because based on the speed that it's advancing it does that would be my caution is it feels like it's going to be a little bit long well i've been wrong before but <laughs> it once right <laughs> um many times it feels like it might be long and again there is one 25 episode season and it came out in 2019 okay you see what i mean yeah it doesn't feel like they're advancing very quickly through the yeah. like he the main heroes are powering up and every like all of that feels like it's advancing at a normal pace but just in terms of what you kind of assume the main storyline might be it's like man it doesn't feel like he's getting very far gotcha <laughs> you know okay so i mean but again it could accelerate down the road i don't know but that would be my one my one caveat okay yeah i'll have to try that because the the animation style was amazing maybe we can put a link in our show notes to just like the trailer or something whatever you oh, showed yeah. me just because it was one of those that I, think I, I just showed you the title song even yes i think that's what it was yeah and like i forgot about it until you just described it again <laughs> <laughs> but I, rem- I remember i was like wow that looks gorgeous yeah yeah so yeah. i yeah, I'll, yeah i'll definitely check that out because cool. there's 
not much TV that I want to watch nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's totally <laughs> untrue, right? Like I'm watching through Daredevil. I need to watch my hero. I need to watch Attack on Titan. I, yeah, there's <laughs> so a lot in the backlog. There, there's a lot, but like that, that is something that I would like to add to the queue to, to to take a look at for sure. And if you watched the first season um, and enjoyed it, again the because it because it was when it was coming out. I remember discussions in 2019, like early 2020, where it was like the big new thing, right? Like my hero right. had entered the scene a couple of years ago, and it was huge. And this was like the everyone was like, "Man, this is gonna be the next my hero, the next Attack on Titan." Like this is the this is the thing to watch. And so if you watch the first season, like I did a couple of years ago, I, I would highly recommend the movie. It definitely is worth your time. Great. Speaking of anime, yep, I watched. I'm not gonna call it an anime, but the first episode of an animated season. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we just had May 4th. So may the 4th be with you. May the you. 4th be with you. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the May. This is the May. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so on May 4th, the first episode of The Bad Batch was released, which is kind of the... Yeah, well played. Well played, yes. <laughs> and they... Re- are releasing so we're recording on thursday they're releasing the second episode on friday so thank you disney plus uh we get two episodes in a week the bad batch is the kind of the first tv series after they kind of kicked off this whole we're going to do 600 tv series Mm -hmm. campaign and so the bad batch if you have not watched clone wars the bad batch is clone force 99 which are like genetically I don't know if they're mutated or like experimented clones Mm -hmm. that basically are enhanced clones. So like you got Hunter who has like enhanced like eyesight and ears and he can like, you know, he's a hunter. There's a, um, like there's a, there's a hunter that's like a sniper. There's like, or there's a clone that's a sniper Mm -hmm. where like, each one of these, it feels very much like a D and D party. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like Wrecker is like the big strong guy, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and so, luckily, they all have like thematic names. <laughs> they, they all have thematic <laughs> names. Yeah. So the first episode actually was significantly longer than I expected. It was seventy five minutes, which was I was Holy expecting twenty two. Yeah. Right. So that, yeah. that that was a nice surprise. Like looking at your watch, like is this episode still going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so. The Bad Batch was introduced, I believe, in season six of Clone Wars. Okay. And the first episode plays right alongside all the events that are happening in Revenge of the Sith. And so you get to see Order 66 again. You get to okay. kind of see all of that. And it is uh, Dave Filoni. Who's, I was about to ask. It's a Filoni Yeah, show. it's a Filoni. So Filoni did Clone Wars. He did Rebels. Uh-huh. And now Bad Batch. And... Bad Batch is starting to tie Rebels to Clone Wars, which is super interesting. Mm. Um, like you get to see some of the characters in both of those. Yeah. Um, is it a similar art style to Clone Wars? Yes, it's it's more it's closer to Clone, Clone Wars, Wars than it okay. is Rebels. Yeah. The art style in Rebels is the biggest complaint. Mm-hmm. Where it, it's that's why I asked. It, yeah. It's very much more like a Nickelodeon art or not Nickelodeon cartoon network art style. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the story I think in rebels is phenomenal. I think it gets a lot of flack just because of the art. Mm -hmm. So bad batch starting it really enjoyed the first episode. I thought it was, I thought, I thought it was awesome. Like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time, Mm -hmm. really excited to see where it goes. You get to, you get to meet Saul Guerrera. Um, Mm -hmm. so you, you meet him in a couple of the other series as well as rogue one. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, you know, already just in the first episode, you're meeting a lot of important characters and you're kind of seeing a different side of the whole order 66 empire taking over. Yeah. You get the whole, uh, emperor Palpatine speech from revenge of the Sith. Like, like I've been scarred. Mm -hmm. Um, you get to see that from the clones perspective. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where they go. Where they go, I'm really hoping all the episodes are 75 minutes. I I doubt it, <laughs> but I I think it is going to be a limited series. I don't quite recall how many episodes. Yeah, but I think it's going to be a limited series. It's it was definitely a fantastic kickoff to the five year arc that Disney Plus has yeah. planned. So yeah, very excited to see where we go there. Yeah. So do you do you feel like you will need either Clone Wars or Rebels uh, kind of knowledge in order to watch this show? For the first episode, no. Okay. Um, I I cannot speak to the rest of the show. Um, Why I don't not? Have, <laughs> I, I don't have that insider <laughs> information. I think that the, the first episode of Bad Batch is significantly better if you have seen Clone Wars, and it's significantly better if you have seen Rebels. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that those are mutually exclusive. 
or you can watch Bad Batch and mm-hmm. think that it's better because you have watched Rebels for different reasons than if you watch Clone Wars. Gotcha. Uh, there's just different ties. Yeah. Uh, it feels like it's almost bridging that gap, yeah. right? Because, you know, Rebels is after three, episode three. Clone Wars is before episode three. So it feels like this yeah. is kind of taking place during episode three. Yeah. So it's Probably a prequel, ever. sequel type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, it's yeah. tying it all together. You don't have to. Um, I will say there are probably very minor spoilers for Clone Wars if you watch this. Nothing that's going to ruin the entire series for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Clone Wars has already been spoiled, right? Like, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, I know the events of Episode Three. Yeah, <laughs> the entire prequel series is spoiled in that sense. Yeah, I, I guess what I meant is that there are some characters that show up in Bad Batch where they are exclusively in Clone Wars and not Episode Three. Yeah, and okay. you don't necessarily know their fate. Okay. Um, gotcha. because of 66 right yeah okay i i really enjoyed the kickoff i was really excited i should have been doing other things and being productive <laughs> <laughs> i stayed up way too late i'm glad you watched it instead and got yeah. to share it with us yeah so, so you want to hop into some icebreakers i do let's do it awesome so this one we have from sirocco would you rather play only one board game for the rest of your life or play any board game but with only one person and which game or what person would that be? Hmm. I love my wife and I love you. So this is going to be a difficult <laughs> one. <laughs> see, see, as much as I love my girlfriend, which I do. Yeah. Um, she doesn't like games very much. <laughs> That's true. So you pick me. <laughs> right. I can just pick you. It makes it easier. Okay. So it's if I, okay, if I could only play either one board game or play board any board game, but with one person. Yeah. Okay. Am I picking the person or the board game as a part of the question, or am I just picking? Yeah, so we're picking the board game and or the person, or I guess and or the person. Yeah. See, the hard thing about the question is if I, like, let's just say hypothetically I picked you. you Hypothetically. Hypothetically. If I picked you, that excludes me from all of these games that, like, I do, like, you know, excludes us from... Uh, Dune, Twilight Dune, Imperium. Twilight Imperium, Game of Thrones, yep. Axis, <clears throat> yeah. you know, actually probably not Axis now, we can play that two player, but yeah. But are you gonna play? Oh yeah, I guess if you're only gonna pick one game, and you're gonna pick Dune or Twilight Imperium. Are you okay only playing that every other year? Right, and then the other thing that happens <laughs> is like you know, like there are people, uh, you know, uh, unnamed, and I'm not gonna point any fingers, who <laughs> will not play, for instance, Dominion with me anymore. Right. <laughs> right? Because I play it too much. <laughs> and it's like, dang it, like, I don't want to play just only this one board game for the rest, and now nobody will play it with me, because it's like, no, Dalton is just like right. a god of terraforming Mars, or whatever, because that's all he ever plays. Yep. I am not. <laughs> yeah. Dalton, but, Dalton is basically a red. Guy, guy, basically <laughs> red. I am the terraformer. Yes. I think... I think it would have to be person. I think it'd have to be person just to keep the variety. Pick. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I've been trying not to bring up Marvel Champions and or Lord of the Rings on this episode, <laughs> but I feel like that could be a game that I could. I'd say it, I don't. I don't think I could actually. Mm-hmm. But like, if I had to pick a game, it would probably be like a Marvel Champions or like a Lord of the Rings, something that's going to have new. Ex- yeah, a lot of content out there. Oh, that's a good point. Something that I could like work through. Mm-hmm. Where like Lord of the Rings has been out and, for and ten years. Yeah, and it's going to continue releasing. Yeah. Right, it's going to support your yep. undying so, hobby. Yes, yeah. So <laughs> that that was the uh, the description for last episode. It's like you know we're we're talking about our drinks, what we've been playing, and Nelson's like obsession into living card games. Please send help or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but like, I, I think like uh, if I was going to pick something though, like gloomhaven i think okay i feel like i could play just gloomhaven for the rest of my <laughs> life the hard thing would be like scheduling it right that's always right the hard yeah it's like getting people to play it with you but then at least it's something that it's like i'm not just getting so good at it that people aren't going to play with me anymore yeah and there's enough content there's it's enough nice characters yeah. it's a co-op like they are continuing to put out content for it kind of slowly but like they are continuing to put out right. content of it it's expensive but that doesn't matter it's the only game i buy so <laughs> right if it was going if i was going to pick a game i think i would i think i would pick gloomhaven if I was if I was gonna pick a game, I'd probably pick Marvel Champions, just because they are putting out things monthly, mm-hmm. right? So it always feels like there's something changing, mm-hmm. and I can play it solo, I can play it multiplayer. Yeah, so that would work. It is another cooperative, so it is another too bad, too good at it yeah. to ever play with you. <laughs> yeah, if I had to pick a person, I'm not gonna answer that question. That's okay. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so I would, uh, 
I think my answer to the original question is I would pick a person. I'm not going to answer that original question <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I know people that I would pick are listening to the episode. Yep. Uh, but if I, I if I had to pick a game, Marvel Champions, you would pick Gloomhaven. Yeah, I would pick I would pick Gloomhaven. I think between the two, though, I think I would probably if given the choice, I think I might I would probably pick you on the thing just so we can keep trying games and games yeah. more games always come out right so Plus, that's what we'll do i will pick you yes you know what i mean oh yeah and then i'll pick a game and then you pick a game <laughs> or something and then you'll be allowed to play as long as it's uh, with me yes exactly <laughs> i mean we do have a board game podcast so i think it would get pretty boring that's true <laughs> if, <laughs> if we only had one game <laughs> it, would just, it would turn into a gloomhaven <laughs> slash <laughs> marvel's champion podcast yes exactly also books <laughs> yeah, also books and sometimes anime yes and sometimes anime. <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, I yeah. Good question. Good question. Good question. Yeah. All right. So I think we have time for one more. Yeah. Um so our next episode is not going to be a fireside. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tricked you. <laughs> yeah, got him. So our next episode we're going to be looking at Scythe by mm-hmm. Stonemeyer Games and I feel like I am on a Stonemeyer Games kick. Like I right. <laughs> I just played Wingspan. I've been playing a lot of Red Rising. Now yep. we're going to be talking about Scythe. Yep. And so it's going to be more of a, a board game breakdown with Scythe. Mm-hmm. And Scythe kind of went crazy on the board game world when it got announced. Like, it went through Kickstarter, it broke all of these records. Yeah. And I think a lot of that was kind of how, like, interesting the theme was and yeah. all of that. So I, I'm really excited to talk about that. But you have prepared an icebreaker for us. Yeah. That kind of leads us into the topic. So yeah. just to preface I, the episode a little bit. <laughs> just to preface the episode. So I will open the floor to you, sir. Yeah. So Scythe, I, I think you're totally right. One of the reasons that it was so successful is because it had a, a lot of novelty to it. Um, it had a lot of, uh, it had several mechanics or things that were being implemented in a way that was just like totally foreign. Um, it had very different feel. Like you said, it had a very unique right. theme. Yeah. Um, and, and just the way that you kind of, I think the feel is the big thing. When you're playing the game, it it just feels different than other board games. It was even for a while hard to classify, like, what category does this board game fall yep. into because yep. of that? Um, so just as you can, you can focus on Scythe or you can, you can broaden it to other games, um, but what is a mechanic um, that you feel you have seen in board games that you would like to see more board games take advantage of? Oh, I like that, yeah. Okay. Ooh. The funny thing is, too, like, I feel like this is something that we will say in episodes like i wish more board games yeah. did that not <laughs> yeah. like i'm on just the, never remember it exactly yeah. not yeah we just don't explicitly remember it yeah i think one of the more unique things in scythe is kind of the action selection mm-hmm. mechanism so you in scythe you have four actions available to you at the beginning of the game you can gain a fifth if you you know make king of the hill mm-hmm. and so those actions are unique per player board i guess it's called action board or whatever it's called yeah. but I, I think that that would be interesting to see. I think we don't see that in a lot of games because it's very hard to balance, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I'm taking this action, which is paired with this action, which gives me this bonus. It is a hard thing to balance. And yet it feels like every single time I play Scythe, whatever faction and player board I have feels like a, it, it, it feels like it because it is a very unique combo, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, each player board plays differently and will heavily dictate your strategy, which we'll talk about <laughs> in our yeah. next episode. Yeah. I think that would be something interesting to see more in games. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like this like unique action selection that you you are you have that other players don't have and that sure. you need to uh, optimize in order to win the game. And the player needs to solve their own puzzle because I I I think I enjoy the you know solve my own puzzle type mm-hmm. games yeah. more than you do. However, Scythe is one of these games where it's not just a solve my own puzzle game. Yeah, and so I think that would be kind of interesting to implement. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna. I'm I'm sure I can come up with another answer too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think that I think that's a great answer, especially because um, you're not only trying to solve your own puzzle um but you're trying to solve your puzzle in the context of what else is going on the board yes you know and yeah and there it's not just a single player solitaire it like it has fighting it has like yep. a, a battle mechanic and a fight me- you know it has um this area control which is like super important um for the game and so yeah i, I think that's that's why that plays out so well um yeah for me i'm looking uh, i'm just like glancing over at my my board game shelf um and dune kind of caught my eye okay the, yeah the fact that um, cause Dune has a asymmetrical player powers. Lots of things have asymmetrical player powers. Um, but Dune has this mechanic where instead of basically, instead of paying to the bank, you pay to a player. 
Yes. Right. And like yep. that will be <laughs> that player's asymmetrical player power. And it just like it just like twists it so much where you're like, okay, not only am I paying, but I'm paying that guy. Like yeah. he's my enemy. Like I really don't want to do that. You know, it just gives you like this huge amount of like pause and it, it, it I don't know, it just turns the decision on its head in, in a way that's really fun to play out. Yeah. I feel like most asymmetrical play, player powers give a player a bonus in the game that they're playing. Yeah. However, Dune changes the rules based on what factions are being played. Yeah, it takes it to another level. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it very much alters the other players' decisions based on which factions are being played. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's like, it, not every game can support game-breaking player powers. And that's not, that's not necessarily what I'm trying to point to. I, I am so impressed that they were able to do that. Yeah, for sure. It is extremely hard to implement. But the feeling of... I think just a lot of games have pay to the bank. That's that's a very common like thing that has to happen. As it's just a part of yep. the as just a part of the game design and and just asking that question of like is there a way that we could have this be pay to a player? Maybe it's a player on your right. Maybe if you have five different types of resources, if you ever have to pay wood, that goes to one player. If you ever to pay wool, that goes to a different player. Like you're just the wool character. Oh, that would be interesting. You know, just like yeah. little things like that. That like okay, just. Do what you can to strip a bank out of a game and see if it can go to the players or to a play area or something like that. I really enjoy that because otherwise the bank starts to feel like this nebulous, like extra player. You know, I've never, <laughs> yeah. been, a, I've never yeah. been a big fan of that. So, yeah. So I, I guess the another one that I'm just kind of thinking of, which uh-huh. would be kind of interesting. Like I, I am not a fan of games with dice, not mm-hmm. saying that I would not like a game with dice, but if it has this dice in it, it's a higher barrier for me to enjoy it, mm-hmm. right? I think it'd be interesting to have more Dice Forge type oh, okay. games yeah. in in the industry, mm-hmm. right? So things that are changing the dice faces or altering the games. And I think it'd be really cool to have a game where the the Dice Forge, instead of like in Dice Forge, you're building your own dice and you get to roll and you get, your, you get to reap your own benefits. Uh-huh. It'd be really interesting to see if you would, you know, modify a common pool of dice. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're modifying dice that everyone gets to roll, what what are the types of benefits that you could do mm. there? Yeah, um, I'm thinking like, like I don't know, like a castle's a burgundy. Like instead of a number, can you roll like an action or something like that? And maybe mm-hmm. like you want to build in actions that you necessarily need, but other players don't. Probably a stretch of an example, right? But like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's an that's a mechanic that, as, as far as I know, that's the only example. Of the mechanic that I've seen is Dice Forge is changing out dice faces yeah. to roll. Probably because it's such a components heavy and expensive thing to yeah. but physically I would, make. I would absolutely love to see more games like that yeah. because that that's such a cool game. Great answers to the question. Any more? <laughs> Any more off the top of your head? No, those are those are the the ones that came to mind. So Yeah, really I, I think I would like to see more like uh engine building. You you just want more engine builders out there? (laughs) No. Uh, (laughs) If you could actually just like disassemble a a train engine, put it in a box. Oh, God, yes. And send it to Nelson. Oh, God, (laughs) yes, yes. More of that. Please, please, yes. Uh, I don't want to pay for shipping, but... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, that... I, I really like that. I think it's going to set us up really well for next episode. Yep. We want to hear what you think. What are some underutilized mechanics that you want to see in more games, mm-hmm. such as like you know the personal player action selection board in Scythe or in anything else? So we're excited to hear that. If you have an answer, reach out to us and let us know. Uh, the best places to do that are going to be Instagram. We're going to post a story to kind of hear your ideas you'll get a shout out on the next episode mm-hmm. um if we like your idea no i'm just kidding we'll give you a shit <laughs> we'll, we'll <laughs> read the idea no matter what um or discord so we we have a growing discord community where we talk about board games books star wars i i do i think my favorite thing about the discord as of today is that the mandalorian spoilers channel which i know not everyone is subscribed to is just yeah. turned into a star wars meme channel like, that's, that's really just, funny we just post star wars memes i have it day. muted because i've not watched the second <laughs> <You're> season <right. laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's literally just star wars memes so, <laughs> so i need to watch the second season then just to join the channel yes yeah <laughs> i mean like like i know mike posts a lot there yeah uh, i post there my wife posts there and it's just like man it it just brings light to my day <laughs> <laughs> and also Twitter. Um, but our, ma- our main two ones are going to be Instagram and discord. Yeah. Uh, those links to find us are going to be in the show notes. 
also on our website if you want to find this thing and be in the top right corner yep so reach out to us let us know what you think uh we'll look forward to hearing from you so with that it was nice to be back in person well, yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think it significantly improves our our mood and our yes, energy yes absolutely we have had a great time tonight yeah so, so cheers buddy cheers